So again, in terms of defenses, we didn't cover many of these things. So all I want to mention here is uh, that you could, for example, tell the JavaScript which sites you will allow, which sites you will not allow. So, for example, you can have a default that says do not allow all these things happen because of JavaScript. You can disable JavaScript for all websites and only enable them for those sites that you trust. So, that is a basic mechanism for defending uh, against this. Um, so, others I have not covered, so let us uh, skip those. Uh, now, this brings to tracking. So, someone was asking you browse something, you click on some advertisement, you see it uh, or rather you are browsing for let us say buying a toaster, you visit Facebook, you visit Twitter, all you will be is bombarded with toaster advertisements, right. So, how do people figure out that you are actually browsing for a toaster and uh, then you are seeing all these ads. So, this happens because of this tracking, okay. Now, let us again see how this uh, tracking is done. So, let us uh, again look. So, the basis for tracking is these advertising firms, okay. So, there are these advertising firms, let us assume there is one very big advertiser who will access many websites and put his advertising images within them, okay. So, let us assume there is an advertiser who is out there. And my website often times the advertiser will pay me money for putting his advertisements on my website, okay. That way I earn money. So, I am a blogger for example and I am blogging, my blog is famous. Now, the advertiser will approach me and say let me put some advertisements on your website. Um, that way I will give you some money because you have a huge following, okay. That is how the advertising world works. Now, suppose this advertiser let us say there is some website A and he put some image corresponding to his advertisement on that particular website. Let me call it image A. Similarly, there is another website B which belongs to some other user. Website A is nowhere related to website B, but the same advertiser is serving both of them and within this he has put some other image B, B okay. Now, consider the case of a client. Now, when I visit this website A, this website A will have some content corresponding to website A and then there will be some image and I am downloading this HTML and when I parse this HTML, I am now going to, I am going to see this image. This image will be part of some advertiser.com slash some path slash image, okay. I am going to make a request to this particular advertising website, okay, to download that particular image. That is what HTML does. It parses it, it sees this image, you have to download that image. So, you are going to contact the advertising website to download that particular image. If you are contacting this advertising agency for the very first time, this guy, so remember you are contacting advertising.com and this guy will set a cookie. Within that cookie, it may note some information, he may not know what your user name and whatever others is, but maybe at some point he may be able to figure it out. But as of now, he will just say some user with this ID 1 has visited website A. He knows he has visited website A because that image will have a unique, he knows that this image has been embedded in website A. So, if someone is asking for that image, that request means he has visited website A. So, that is how he will see ID 1 visited website A, okay. Now, the same user is now going to visit website B now, okay. Again, he will download website B content and there again there is some other image from the same advertiser because it is a big advertiser. Now, what the browser will do is because it is advertise.com slash path 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 some image B, whenever it is contacting advertiser.com, it will take the cookie belonging to that advertiser. Remember, it is not taking 
cookie belonging to website A and sending to advertiser. That is not allowed. That is not same origin. But you will always take the cookie belonging to that origin and pass it. So here the origin is advertiser.com. So it will take the cookie which was earlier set when this user visited website A and pass it to this same advertiser again, but now it will ask for image B. Now what the advertiser will know is this cookie has an ID 1. Now he will in his database, now he will say now it has visited website B. Is it clear what is happening now? Because first time he identified ID 1 said website A he visited, second time this person visited he is going to share the same cookie back. Then he will know okay this is ID 1 guy and now he is visiting website B and that will become the tracking history. He visited some other website, he will now know that this is the same person who has visited website C. And he now has a history of this particular user that he is visiting these websites, from that he will mine some information, maybe he will figure out that something happened this that way and all and then accordingly he will target. So this is how tracking happens. So this is happening because of what are called third party cookies. Third party cookies means when I visit website A, website A will install some cookies. Those are called first party cookies because I specifically visited website A and it is installing some cookies. But when I visit website A, if I contact some other domains and they are installing cookies for me, they are called third party cookies. And all this is happening because of third party cookies. Now as a defense, you could potentially disable third party cookies from your browser. You can tell the browser do not install third party cookies. If you want to avoid this kind of, uh, so the same thing I had mentioned. So you could disable third parties cookies uh, completely or you could disable cookies itself completely though it will make life a lot more harder. Um, and often times if you use private browsing, uh, it does prevent storage of cookies. Uh, it will maintain cookies for a session, but it does not, uh, this persistent cookies are uh, not saved as part of private browsing. Okay? So that is with respect to the tracking. <coughs> so this cross site scripting is something you will see in today's lab. And this is one of the top web vulnerabilities. Okay? So of all the web vulnerabilities that are there, we call this XSS, this stands for cross site scripting. And uh, this, even though there is same origin policy, you will see that that is not going to help. And there are two types of cross site scripting, one is called persistent, another is called non-persistent. Let us see both uh, one by one. The reason why persistent is there is because whatever code you inject persists. So again let me explain the attack and then we will see what this is. You must have seen websites where there is some message board where you can add your comment or there is a discussion forum where you can add your own comment in some box. So the website will have something like uh, saying uh, add your message and it will give you a box and it will probably tell messages added. So for example, Al is added message 1, Bob added message 2 and so on. Okay? So this is the type of website, uh, some websites are there like this where uh, you can see previous comments people posted and then you added your own uh, comment and uh, that comment will also display. Okay? So in these types of websites, this persistent excesses can happen. So what is that persistent excesses? So Mallory, which is the attacker, is going to visit this website okay? and there is a comment box there. So what Mallory is going to do is instead of adding a regular message in the comment box, she is going to add some JavaScript. Okay? When she adds this JavaScript, it will go to the server. The server basically takes hold of this JavaScript 
and is going to create a new HTML. So, normally what will happen is it will have Alice M1, Bob M2 and once this message is sent, so there will be a send button when you click on send, it this message goes to the server. Server then is going to add an entry using some dynamic scripting which will include message 3 whatever the Mallory typed here and then display this website to whoever is visiting, display this HTML to whoever is visiting that particular website. So, now if some uh, uh, X visits this particular website, this is the HTML he is going to get, which the browser will parse and display. Okay? Now, what is happening here is the following. <coughs> so, this is, uh, this is the case of uh, HTML where you are allowing users to input comments, say where you are basically telling you write your name, you write your message and this is the submit button you kick and when you do this a post request, HTML has get request, post request, post is basically used for forms, take this information and pass it to the server. And what does the server do? Server is basically going to generate this HTML which will take whatever it is, add the name here, the message here and create something like this and this is the HTML that gets posted, anyone, not just Alice, Bob, Joe, John, Jane, anyone who accesses this website will get this HTML. Okay? And the browser will parse this HTML and display. Okay? Now, what did Mallory do here is basically this is the message she has typed in that message box. Now, what does the browse the server do? It will take this and add that as part of the message like this. Okay? And this is there as a HTML page. Anyone who visits, that is why it is called persistent, because this persists on the website. Anyone who visits it will download this HTML, the browser will parse it and it will see that there is a script which means it will run JavaScript and what this is a very simple uh, harmless attack. All it will do is it will do a pop up which says alert XSS injection. It did not really do any damage. So, when the browser parses this, it will show all this, but at when it parses this, it will do a pop up which will say XSS injection while it shows the other comments fine. Is this clear so far what has happened here? This is a more powerful attack, earlier was a harmless attack. Here, what you are trying to tell is take the cookie and send that cookie to this particular website. And same origin does not help here in the sense that what, so if you remember, let us say this is on some website, um, let us say this is, let us say on itb.ac.in. Okay, this is the website you accessed and somehow you got some HTML from that and within this HTML is the JavaScript, which is this. This is the script that is there in the HTML. Now, this HTML has come from itb.ac.in and itb.ac.in server is basically telling the client, take my cookie. It is not telling take someone else's cookie. It is not telling take IIT Delhi's cookie or uh, take Amazon's cookie. It is telling uh, iitbombay.ac.in has this JavaScript, the server is sending this JavaScript to the client and is saying take my own cookie and send it to this evil site.com. And you will do it. I mean, if the server says to do it, I mean, you do not know exactly what that this is something malicious, right? Server JavaScript is JavaScript. It is saying take my cookie and send it to someone. And because it is from the same origin, you will take that cookie and send it to someone. And that someone is this evil site.com. Now he has access to your cookies. And as I said, cookies carry sensitive information. This is clear what has happened. Same origin is not going to help because the instruction is coming from a genuine website. Somehow Mallory has put some malicious code in the genuine website, thereby you really cannot do anything here. Okay, and similarly, not just this, you can direct them to arbitrary pages, you can make them download virus, whatever it is. So, it is a very powerful attack. If you do this, if you have an instruction that says go to this location, download that virus and 
put it, some may be accidentally you can even execute it. Okay. So, that is the basic, but as I said whenever you are visiting these type of things you can potentially see that redirection. So, for example, when you execute this the browser will visit this evil site dot com and you can actually see that something bad has happened. So, there are ways to avoid this as well. So, for example, you can hide the attack using an invisible frame in which case you would not even see the attack. So, invisible frames are part of HTML again I do not want to uh, get into it uh, or you could hide by an image where image is supposed to display, but that guy would not send any image. So, it would not display. So, you would not see this. So, all I am saying is this redirection can be hidden through invisible frames or embedding that command of stealing cookie as part of an image. In which case uh, you would not uh, be able to identify that something even has happened on your machine. Okay. So, that is uh, with respect to persistent now comes non persistent this is uh, slightly trickier persistent you can actually see the website itself will see that uh, there is a code um, as per in the message board and it can maybe remove that code if someone complains non persistent is even trickier that this one no one it doesn't persist so the server is not even aware that there is malicious code on the server so how does this happen so the kind of web pages this relies on is on a query website. Like again, let me tell you something uh, that happens. Suppose there is a website and there is a search box, and you are giving people to type something in the search box. And when you type something, let us say you searched for ABC, this message goes to the server, server will parse that search string and it will go do something based on the search string and in response to this it will tell uh, you searched for ABC and these are the results. So, it will give 1 dot 2 dot 3 dot. Okay. So, this is what is happening, this is clear. So, the there is a search box which the client will type based on this something goes to the server, server will then create this this is unique to your search, this no one else for example, if I am searching for ABC, this page which I am showing here will display only to me, it will not display to other users, others users are not searching for ABC. I search for ABC, it will generate a unique page only for me and pass this to me. Okay? So, this is the mechanism that non persistent XSS leverages. Now, the question is in this case you put a script. Okay, you put some script saying steal some cookie, will it help you? <coughs> Suppose I put that code earlier I have shown steal my cookie and send it to evil.com. If I put that script in that search box, naturally the server will put that script here, your browser will execute it. What is happening there? Will it, what will the browser do? It will take your own cookie and send it to evil.com, but you are the one who is typing that script. So, who is affected? It is like poking your own eye, right. You are entering that uh, script and it is stealing your own cookie and sending it. So, the way I have explained here that is not scope for I mean scope for an attack because I am entering my own malicious code, I am going to be affected by it, okay. That is not the that is not what we want we want to steal someone else's cookie. So, for that you need to do something else. So, what is that something else? So, here the idea is that you somehow trick some victim, victim is a client here to visit attacker site. This you can do to phishing, you can do through some other whatever means. Somehow you are visiting this attacker site. Now, this attacker site will have some link maybe that claim your free iPad, some button will be there and you will click on that button. Now, when you click on that button, what that button does is it is going to send this query to the website, 
where the vulnerability, this excess is vulnerability is there. So, this is a little bit complicated. So, just pay attention. So, let me explain. So, there is there is some malicious attacker, let me call it Mallory, there is Alice and there is some website which has the search button. Okay? Alice and this Mallory has also some malicious website. Okay, Alice has visited this malicious website and when she visited this malicious website, Alice clicked on some button there and when she clicked on that button, this query is going to get launched. What is it saying this query? It is saying visit this victim site which is the site which has the search and within the search query, you put this script. Okay, so, Alice browser is now going to contact this and as part of the search query, it will send this information. Okay. Now, what will now this because you send this search results here, this is going to construct that your query is malicious code results, no results found because you may not have results for that. And this reply will come to Alice now and the Alice browser will parse this reply and it will execute whatever JavaScript it is seeing and that JavaScript is saying take my cookie and pass it to evil.com and whose cookie will it take? It will take the cookie belonging to this website because this JavaScript belongs to this particular website. It will take the cookie from this and then send it to <laughs> Mallory's uh, website. Is it clear what has happened here? So, it is kind of convoluted but you are basically triggering this attack by visiting some malicious website which is contacting this query, this victim website by passing this query and your browser is parsing it and is taking away your cookie and sending it to someone else. Okay? So, that is the basic idea here. So, this is called non-persistent because this page that you are generating is unique to only you and it does not stay on the server because that is an ephemeral HTML that gets generated based on your search. Any questions so far? So, how do you defend against this? Mainly this is happening because you are allowing scripts to be written in place of messages. So, this is a lack of what we call input validation. So, if you have a field that accepts only phone numbers, you should check that you are getting phone numbers or not scripts. And if you get a field that accept messages, you should ensure that there is nothing called scripts. That is, you, you are not seeing things like script like this within that message. That means something odd is happening. So, all this you have to do what is called input validation, which basically the server has to do. I mean, there are ways to escape these things also again in the interest of time, I do not want to cover. So, basically all get post variables can be sanitized where you can strip off all these brackets and quotes that represent code, uh, but there are ways to obfuscate this, but these days excesses detection, um, lot of browsers do pay attention to it, but as I said, it is still one of the popular which you will actually see as part of the lab. So, this is for example, URL obfuscation. So, if you have a script that is doing input validation by looking at the fact that you are having this bracket, that bracket script, you could obfuscate it by using the Unicode versions of it, then uh, you do not know what this means or rather you have to modify the script. Um, when I say script, all I am saying is the server side, for example, when it gets this message, Right? It can check whether there is a keyword script within that okay? and then disable that if in case it saw the keyword script. But what you can potentially type instead of this is something like this you can type in the message box. In which case if it were copying this directly into HTML, the browser will interpret this Unicode and convert this into this and then execute. So, the attack will still happen. So, all I am saying is input validation, if you do not do a good job, 
by not only paying attention to the word script, but maybe converting that script into Unicode, whatever it is, you have to do a better job of input validation. Otherwise, attacks can attackers will find a way to circumvent your attack mechanism also. So that's the basic idea um, that is uh, telling. So here is another um, example of a script where if your scanner is searching for cookie at the end of a URL and you write your code like this, it cannot, it will not work again. So because the cookie is not quite uh, uh, obvious, as in it's searching for the word cookie at the end of a URL, but here there is no URL. You are constructing the URL by doing something like this. All I'm saying is that if you code your input validation in some way, people can figure out how you have coded and come up with all these alternatives to circumvent your coding. That is what this is saying. Okay. Um, we will uh, stop here because the next topic I want to start after the break. <laughs>